Hello, my name is Thomas Maul, and I want to talk to you about the new command system worker in 4D V19R4 and the difference to launch external process. Both commands allow you to talk to other applications, and you might have a question, why do we introduce a new command to do it? So first start with a review of launch external process, which is available for some years now. Uh, it allows you to open a visible graphical application, like in this example, text edit or notepad, both on Mac and Windows. Um, depending on the operating system, the syntax to launch an application is a little bit different, also because the path is different. If we do the same with a system worker, it looks similar and different. So system worker is a class. So we start with class and dot new. It also receives the, the command to open it, which is the same. But you might notice that on Windows, we pass an additional object to say hide window faults. This is now a main difference with a launch external process. By default on Windows, uh, the graphical interface is visible. Meaning, if you do something like running a console application, you get a black window. And you would need to hide that. While with system workers, by default, it is invisible. So meaning, if you want to show it, you need to unhide it by passing hide window faults. But outside beside that, both acts the same. Here now another example with launch external process, not launching a visible application, but running a, a terminal or console application. Here, simply doing a ping. If you run such an application, we might have up to three parameters. Uh, in parameter passing to that, here empty, the result which you receive, variable out, and the third parameter, to receive possible errors. Uh, for this example, it is quite similar on Mac and Windows. Let's launch it. It's the same code in 4D on a Windows computer. And if I execute that, you might have seen for millisecond a black window. I'm not sure if you can see it in the video, but you might see a black flashing window. This is because the console is appearing with launch external process. Why normally in launch external process, you need to hide it up front. And hopefully you can see with the recording, now nothing appears. So beside that, if you look inside the result of a parameter, you might see here that the second line ping with ausgeführt looks really strange. There's an empty space in between. This is why I'm using a German version, because if the result it includes umlauts or diacritical characters, French, Spanish, German, Japanese. The result of a launch external process might be missing information or useless because the encoding of the text is often wrong. Now do the same with system workers. We execute it. There's no flash because it's by default hidden. And if you look inside the result, the result is now in the parameter which is returned. We can see that it's another result, but there's no space, but still the umlaut is missing. But with system worker, we can pass a second parameter, as we saw already for, for hiding. We can pass a parameter for encoding. And here we set encoding IBM 437, which is the old DOS standard. And DOS is still used for the console on Windows. And now you can see, now the umlaut is correctly inside. So this is the first interesting difference. System workers allows you to specify the encoding of text, which could be Windows encoding, DOS encoding, or UDF8 or whatever else. There's a quite a long list of pro properties we can pass. Things like timeout, data type, if you want to get it as a text or as a blob, 
the encoding of the format. Uh, we can pass environment variables. We can preset the current directory. Already showed high window. So all this is with a single parameter to the object, which makes it much more easy to use when launch external process. And on top of the list, you can see that we can pass a set of formulas. These are now callback formulas. So whenever something is happening, we get a callback. And this is quite interesting. In this example, I'm using the callback for own data. So whenever data arrives, this formula is called. As a formula, I'm using a quick and dirty debug uh, call message. It just opens a window displaying the text, something you should not use in the production mode, but for a simple test, it's quite interesting. So let's execute it. And as you can see, the message, when it appears, arrives and is displayed, and the text is modified. So we have a callback for running operations. It could be super interesting. Imagine you do things like um, uh, like curl or uh, uh, other long running operations. So at the end of a operation, you see the complete text, everything arrives, but while it is arriving, you get already some calls. And this calls allows you to respond on data arriving while it is arriving, not needing to wait till at the end for a progress bar for acting on events forever. Um, another example for that is if you use commands like MQTT or different protocols, so when new message just comes in, you get a call and can respond to the message. Um, now the same operation on Windows. I did, showed it before on Mac. Let's do the same. And the message is not really nice. So what we did not answer yet, yet is, when does this callback happen? The callback happens every time when the external code is calling for D. And this might be, as we saw with some luck on Mac before, always with the end of a line, or as it happens here on Windows, sometimes after five bytes, after 10 bytes, even after two bytes. So you might see only a small part of a message. Even the complete text is in response. You can see everything is in the response parameter. Uh, the callback was coming too often. So meaning we need to spend a little bit more time. In this example, I wrote a simple class using the class constructor to set stuff like a data type encoding and added a function for end data, which allows me to be more than a single line. And in this line, I, I use the data, which I initialize size in constructor to uh, add all received data, then check if the data returns uh, includes a return character, and if yes, I display it. So it's more or less the same, but now the display happens only when there's a, a return inside. And calling it as before, just passing directly the parameter, which is the class instance. Let's try it. And now we have a full line. So this was still a simple, very simple example. Here we don't even see a difference because Google responds so quickly that every ping gets in two seconds. And with two seconds, uh, we, we got the full text. Everything is in the message. But we could not see a difference in screen because it was always the same answer. So let's use something uh, slower, not really slower, but Google is here in Munich, just some kilometers away. For the method is in the United States. So from Germany to US, it takes a while. So we have different ping times. And this shows that this is really true. Um, so we could use that for most sophisticated callbacks, for responding to data, for displaying data. Um, here's an example where I use a formula progress callback. Let's take a look how it works. And again, I do it for Google. Um, 
Here you can see the class is a little bit more complicated. We uh, have a callback, we have a flag for enable stop button or not. I do some assets checking if, if all the data is correct. I use a shared variable to uh, manage if I want to have a stop button or not as passed above. Uh, in the on data event, we check if the stop button was set and then call terminate. Talk about terminate in a minute. Below, same job as before. We use the data. If there's something in the data, we concat the data. We check if the received data contains 10. If yes, we use a worker to send the first part till the return to this worker and contain the, continue with the remaining ones. And we also have an on terminate function. As soon as the job is fully done, we call the worker telling that we are finished here by passing 100 for 100% to show that this uh, job is fully received. So let's take a look inside the um, um, the, the worker itself. So the worker, we, we use it to display a progress bar using the progress component. Uh, because we could have run several uh, Jobs at the same time, we use a collection to know uh, which one we want to use to display. Search our, in this list, search our current job. Or, or create it if it's not existing yet. Um, if it's the first call and we are not finished yet, we start a new progress bar, set the title, push it in our, in our uh, collection. We check if you want to stop it to enable the stop button. When in the loop, we check if the stop button was set. If yes, we set our flag. And if it's 100, we quit. So we remove the window, remove it from the collection. If not, we set a message to have either the endless loop message or we set the exact progress. So that is the code. Let it run. And we can see that we have now a progress bar for a worker while it's running. So for ping, this is a little bit useless, I know. But imagine again that you are using curl or a similar job, uh, downloading from FTP, HTTP, uh, FTPS or whatever, and the download needs a while. The customer wants to stop it. As you just could see, you can use a stop button. Or the download might run for 10 minutes and you want to see the progress bar. So let's do it a little bit more complex here. Um, I created a method for that with uh, four pings running at the same time. So I have a collection with different shops. Here for a method running in US, Google running in Germany, knowledge base running in California, and knowledge base running in Tokyo. Uh, for each ping, we similar, simply start uh, the progress bar, or use this parameter with the progress callback, and use the ping to the URL given and start a new system worker. And below in the loop, we just wait for the workers to be finished. And if it's terminated, remove it from our list. And if the list is finished, stop the loop. By the end, we have four pings running in parallel. Let's execute that. And you can see that it's now free. The last one is Tokyo because it's the slowest response here. The stop button works and the free are running. And now the 10 pings are over, so finished. And this is something impossible with, with uh, launch external process and shows some of the features or the power you can get with system blockers. So much for today. Thanks for your attention.